Alrighty everyone, welcome back to another video and I know in the last video I said I was going to be going over project structure in this video but I actually want to save that for a little bit later on because in this one I want to show you some of the updates that I've been working on. So first of all, as you can probably notice, I updated the UI a bit. I have these custom app icons that we're going to be building on the left and all of the other kind of system apps and system settings on the right felt a little bit cleaner that way. And I also built out a lot of the networking logic. So right now, what I have is the core server up and running. It's live on the back end. And I am now connected to it from this machine. And just to give you a perspective of um, kind of my environment right now, I'm sitting in my office right now and I'm recording on my iMac, but I also have my laptop running uh, or sitting right next to me and it's running this exact software as well. So both of these devices are connected to the same network. And not only that, but they are actually connected in a way where they can communicate with one another. So in order to demonstrate that, I'll show you the first app that I built out and that is this uh, chat MVP. So this is kind of the ping pong app that I said I was gonna write in the last video but I also added some additional functionality as well. And that is, well, might as well show you what's going on right here. So in this app, um, pretty much a basic chat app, you can send messages back and forth. So right now I'm just sending, you know, basic text data to my MacBook. And another cool thing, just some kind of chat functionality, I can edit that message if I want, and I can also delete it. And I know you guys can't see this, but I will I'll send a message from my MacBook right there. And now let me edit it. Tuna. I'll say tuna Sandy. And let me go ahead and delete that. All right. So there was the demo, probably the most boring demo that you ever seen in your life. It looks in functions like a very MVP normal chat app. However, the very cool thing about this architecture is that even though it looks and functions like a normal chat app, there's actually no centralized database being used to store any of this app data. All of this app data, including these contacts right here and the messages themselves and the delivery statuses, all of this is stored directly on the devices themselves. And well, actually I, I lied about that. We are logging the blocks. Let me pull this up in case you wanna follow along with this. So right now we are logging the blocks, which in other words, is just like the messages sent back and forth between devices. We are logging them on the back end for kind of debugging and development purposes. However, the um, TNBOS, it doesn't like pull from the back end at all. It's purely for debugging purposes. And we have that ticket right there to remove that functionality or turn it off by default. But yeah, just wanna uh, kind of point that out. Now, another cool feature about TNBOS that I built in is some fault tolerance logic. And yes, I know that cool and fault tolerance aren't normally used in the same sentence, but I wanna show you this because, well, I thought it was cool at least. So as you know from the last video, the basic architecture of the system is pretty much to have some devices hooked up to a single server and then through that server, they can send messages back and forth. Pretty simple. However, right now, I have my iMac communicating with my laptop and they're connected through two different servers. Now, this isn't necessary for kind of this architecture to work, but the reason I have it written this way, this way is because if one of these servers ever goes offline, then these devices are still able to communicate with each other and I'll show you in the UI how we can see that. So right now, let me, uh, this is kind of cluttery looking. All right, so right now, my iMac is connected through my MacBook through these two networks right here. Uh, VTX and TNB, they're pretty much just two servers I spun up and just added these, uh, you know, this little text to give it a shorter identifier. But you can see in this top right that those icons have green rings around them. And it means that these are pretty much like two channels that you can send data through. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go on my MacBook 
and I'm just gonna completely delete, and I'll show you what I'm doing on my MacBook. Actually, I can do it right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in my network manager and just completely delete one of these networks. I say I'm gonna delete TNB completely. So whenever I do that, you can see that I can still send messages back and forth. So yeah, I know that this is uh, definitely overkill, especially for like a private network where you're just like uh, changing some of your digital picture frames or I don't know, making a plant watering system or something. But I did think it was pretty cool how these devices can still communicate even if one of the uh, nodes or servers between them that allows them to communicate, it goes down, they still can kind of, I don't know, almost work organically and find another path between one another. So like I said, um, if you're into fault tolerance, uh, I thought that was pretty cool at least. So with all of that, uh, yeah, pretty cool. We have the very basic uh, structure MVP build out. Now in the upcoming videos, what I have planned is, let's see, have a little guide on the right side of my screen here. All right. So in the next video, I'm planning on going through spinning up one of these uh, servers right here. And I'll also show you how to set up a domain name with SSL. I know a lot of people look for that and there's not a lot of great content online for that. So I'll take you through that process. And then once we have that, I'll show you how to connect to your server with uh, TNBOS. It's pretty simple. You pretty much just hit add network and I'm sure you can figure all this out. Just fill in the form and hit submit. But we'll go through that process. And also um, right now, we already saw one of these apps, the chat app. There's another kind of simple university app, I called it. This isn't functional or anything right now, it just says university and that's it. And the reason that I wrote this separate app is I just wanted to kind of create this MVP, having something else is an app, mainly to ensure that I could pretty much write this architecture that supported multiple apps in that I wasn't like hard coding too many things into a single app. And then once I added another one, I was gonna have to go back and rewrite a bunch of stuff, yada, yada. Either way, not important. The point being is that in the upcoming tutorial, I'm also gonna be building a simple speed test app. And all this app is gonna do is it's pretty much gonna, um, oh, let me pull this up again. It's gonna be similar to this architecture where you're just gonna send like a ping message and it's gonna send you back a pong message and it's just gonna time how long that takes so we can see how fast this network actually is. But in terms of app development, what that means is we're gonna be designing the protocol. In other words, the rules for how those two devices communicate with one another should be pretty simple since it's only like one request and response cycle. And then we're also gonna be designing and building out the UI. It's probably only gonna be like uh, one component or I don't know, one container, a couple components. But yeah, show you how to build a simple uh, speed test app. And then after all of that, uh, we will then hop into some of this TNBOS architecture. I'll go through some of these more technical details of exactly how TNBOS communicates with the core server and how it keeps track of what other devices are in line, so on and so forth. And even though a lot of this isn't strictly necessary in terms of app development, since you know the idea is to have a lot of this logic abstracted away, I did want to go over it because I want to hear all of your feedback on, well, quite a few things. Like I said in the last video, there are lots of interesting challenges that I came across when building everything out. So I want to hear your thoughts on some of the architecture and design patterns, uh, especially since to my knowledge, nothing like this has really been uh, uh, built or nothing that I found online exactly like this. So I just wanna hear your thoughts and see if uh, I can improve anything. And aside from that, it's always good to have a solid foundation before you know building too much on top of it. But yeah, that's uh, pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. So as always, if anyone has any questions or if anyone gets stuck on anything throughout the series, uh, there's a Discord link in the description below. I'll also include the links to the GitHub repos, both for TNBOS, which again is a Electron React and Redux app, and also the core server repo, which is a Django application, pretty much just allows devices to communicate, almost acts as a router in a way. And 
yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So in the next video, we're going to be deploying a server. See you then.